you played World of Warcraft back during its vanilla release, or returned to Azeroth when it launched with WoW Classic, you may have noticed that a lot of the game was rather incomplete. This came down to logistics more than anything, they had to get the game out the door, so the developers at Blizzard focused on what was most important to make that happen. Sadly, it also meant that some of the game's epic quest lines were frustratingly unresolved. One of these includes what might be the oldest mystery in World of Warcraft, who burned down the Shady Rest Inn. When this quest was first released, it was agonizingly uncertain, but thankfully the storyline was later finished several expansions later, and now remains one of the most iconic stories from early eras of the game. So, let's explore World of Warcraft's oldest mystery, and find out who was behind the tragedy of the Shady Rest Inn. Before we get started, I'd like to kindly ask you to like this video if you enjoy it, and to subscribe if you'd like to see more. You can also ring the bell if you want to make sure you never miss an upload. Doing all of that helps the channel get noticed by the Elder Spirits at YouTube, who then decide to share it out with more people, so that would be rad. Also, if you'd like some bite-sized bits of lore and storytelling, go check out my short-form content over on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. It had been moons since I set foot on Kalimdor. My adventures had taken me here before, but my attention was focused on the Eastern Kingdoms for some time. The smell of the sea as I stepped from the boat during the sunset was refreshing, even as the oppressive, humid heat of the Dustwallow Marsh bore down on me. My journey here over the sea was long, and honestly, right now all I could think about was laying my head on a comfortable bed in the closest inn, and so I set out to the one near the northern gates of the city. A nice cup of ale wouldn't sit too poorly in my stomach either. And yet, as I walked towards the entrance, my attention was drawn around the corner of the building, where I noticed a destitute man sitting beside some crates in the mud. He was filthy, beard overgrown, and hair hanging in front of his eyes, dirt and dust covering him, and his only company was a rat scampering about his person. At first, I thought he was just some drunk. Every city has their fair share, but our eyes briefly met and… well, while he may have been deep in his cups, there was a sadness there that went beyond addiction. I walked to him, asking if I could do anything to help if he needed anything. The poor man just looked up at me and almost sang a sad shanty. He'll bring you meat, he'll bring you beer. A grinning face from ear to ear. He served us all from year to year. We call him Smiling Jim. He just went on and on like that, saying nothing more and nothing less. A nearby guard called out to me. He almost seemed as if to be standing vigil over the man. Another guard seemed to be bothering him, so I expertly inserted myself into the conversation to save the one who was clearly on duty. He introduced himself as Guard Byron, and said, Can't help it if I feel sorry for old Jim there. He wasn't always like that. Running in out in the marsh for a while. Wonderful place. <sighs> Look, I don't really want to talk about it. Bring it up with Captain Vimes if you really have to. He didn't sound very, well, eager to even bring up what happened to this Jim fellow or his inn. But my curiosity peaked. I decided to take Byron up on his advice and headed for the keep asking around until I was pointed to Captain Garen Vimes and granted an audience. I appreciated it, the man must be busy. I told the captain about my encounter with Smiling Jim, and he said, James Hiles is his real name. He opened an inn out at the edge of the Barrens. Wanted to make a nice place for travelers to stop over. Might be he was thinking too big. But the inn did do well for a while. Then we lost control of the roads in the marsh, and the ogres took over. James was too stubborn to give up his dream for safety within our walls, and the Shady Rest Inn was burned to the ground. We're investigating, but haven't had much luck. If you want to help out, see what you can find in the rubble. Poor James never recovered from the destruction of the Shady Rest and the murder of his family. The boys and I are doing what we can to find the monsters who did this. I've sent our best investigator, Inspector Tarim, out to the ruins but this is too big a job for any one man. If you'd lend Tarim a hand, we'd appreciate it. <laughs> Light knows we don't like to be out there helping. The main road will lead you to the inn, but take care. Your journey will take you beyond the protection of my soldiers. Though I thanked the captain for his concern, I have faced worse challenges than what I know to lurk in these swamps. Though I intended to rest after my trip, 
well, this seems like the sort of mystery that needs immediate attention. So I saddle my steed and exit the city along the rather garish highway that the Alliance has constructed cutting through Dustwallow. It's a straight shot, no turns or detours necessary, and it's not long before I see what must be the Shady Rest Inn. The ruins lay at the crest of a hill, a skeleton against the skyline. It's eerie. Trotting my mount up to the building, I notice several bodies against a lamppost just a few meters away, axe buried deep into one of the skulls. That isn't a very good sign, but I press on. Just outside the ruins, I find Vimes's man, one Inspector Tarum, grizzled and picking over the ruins himself. I approached and hailed the man. It's good to see that Captain Vimes is finally assigning others to this investigation. I've used a reflective powder to dust the area. It will reveal suspicious objects and markings, helping you to focus your efforts. Look over anything the dust illuminates. I briefly step inside the Shady Rest Inn, or what's left of it, just to drink in the tragedy of it all. Despite the smoldering embers having died down ages ago, parts of the tavern still seem to almost smoke from the fire that consumed it. The stench of it still lingered, mingling with the humidity of the marsh, even with the cooler air of the barrens blowing in. Debris was scattered about the ruin, the charred remains of barrels and boxes flung about the building as whatever battle happened here. A wicked sword was lodged into one of the building's still standing support beams, metal blackened by the inferno. Some poor, unfortunate souls appeared to not make it out of the fire. One skeleton rests downstairs, near where the door must have been. It's not small, so I pray that this isn't the body of Hyle's child. There's also the skeleton of what must have been a warrior, and what remains of the upstairs, huddled in a corner. I wondered for a moment if the blaze woke this man, and he had no option but to accept his doom as the fires consumed him. Even more unsettling is the skull pinned with a dagger to the husk of a tree outside, clearly a message left for any Alliance passerbys. The only solace in all of this that I can take is that at least one of the Horde attackers did not make it out of this alive. A skull tattooed in the fashion of the Horde can be found along the side of the building, next to a ribcage picked clean by either the fire or some carrion. Taking Inspector Tarim's suggestion, I begin searching the ruins for some clues of the identity of the culprit. Thankfully, the first of these is right outside of the inn. Tarim himself sees it too, approaching and kneeling down, saying, Mysterious hoofprints, scorched shields, straight badges. How do we make sense of all this? Indeed, it's an odd circumstance. I join him, kneeling down carefully as to not disturb the prints left here in the mud. Rows of hoofprints lead away from the still smoking skeleton of the Shady Rest Inn. There are at least a few visible impressions, with more rows of prints almost imperceptible in the soft mud of the marsh. Honestly, I'm more than a bit surprised that these have even survived this long, considering this environment. It's a good thing I decided to take a look at this when I did, though one does hope that Tarim could have reported this himself. Regardless, I enter the ruins again. As stated, it's a mess, but there are still some useful items to be found. A glint of light on the ground catches my eye from underneath the rubble. Brushing debris and ash caked onto the object reveals the insignia of a gold anchor on white, enameled on the surface. The sign of Theramore. Underneath the anchor is embossed the name, Lieutenant Pavel Reith. The badge seems almost completely out of place in this ghost of a building. I'm thankful the fire did not damage any of its reliefs or the name etched upon it. I'll have to ask Captain Vimes about this Pavel Reith character. Regardless, a final glance about the building yields a final result. A blackened shield hung above the fireplace. I approach and examine it. An iron shield, blackened by the fire that raged through the inn, is affixed to the crumbling chimney, one of few remaining parts of the structure that once made up the Shady Rest Inn. The shield can be removed from the brick of the chimney. Carefully, I detach the armor, fingers smudging some of the soot that has darkened it, and I wrap it in some cloth to preserve it as much as I can. This is not a lot to go off of, but at least it's something. Now, these ruins make me uncomfortable. The tragedy here has almost poisoned the air, and I wish to be rid of it. I pass Inspector Tarim and give him a nod, mounting my steed once more, and heading back to Theramore to speak with Captain Vimes. He said, Have you found anything of interest at the Shady Wrist Inn? More than I expected, honestly. I tell him first of the hoofprints in the mud around the building, leading off into the marsh. Hoofprints, huh? It is true that there is an extraordinary amount of centaur activity in the lands near the Dustwallow Marsh. 
In brief incursions into the Barrens, we found their camps and holdings dot in the area. I'll send Falgren Hastil, one of our trackers, to see if he can find where these tracks lead. Vimes calls out to one of his aides in the room. To Soren! I need someone, Falgren Hastil preferably, to take care of this lead on the prince near the Shady Rest Inn. I'm impressed with Theramore's punctuality. A man almost immediately walks in and kneels briefly before the captain, saying, Falgren Hastil reporting, sir. I will find where the hoof prints lead and report back to you. He then salutes and leaves. I turn back to the captain. We have more to talk about. I next take out the shield and lay it on the table. He says, Hmm, I'm no expert with the construction of arms and armor. Their use, yes, but not their making. This shield seems as ordinary as any, except in the damage from the fire that engulfed the inn. <sighs> I'm sorry I can't be much help, but I can refer you to someone who would be. Kaz Toosprocket, one of our best blacksmiths, works the forge at the smithy. Take the shield to him and see what he can tell you. I nod. Hopefully the gnome, I assume with a name like Toosprocket, will find something neither of our eyes can see. Finally, I take the badge I found in the ruin and toss it to the captain. I have high hopes for this clue, but the captain's face grows a bit dark. He said, It's never good news when a guard's badge is brought to me. Sometimes it's a man or woman who's fallen in battle, and I'm left to bring the news to a grieving family. Other times, we never find out what happened to him, and other times, it's even worse than that. Hmm. I don't recognize the name Lieutenant Pavel Reith. Your best bet would be to check with Adjutant to Soren. He keeps track of the records for the Theramore Guard, from personnel to their equipment. He should be able to tell you who this Reith is with a quick check of his books. Handing the badge back to me, Captain Vimes gestures to one of his aides at the front of the room, the same one he ordered to summon the soldier earlier. I approach him, this adjutant to Soren, and he said, Hello? You'd like information about a specific member of the Theramore Guard? Wreath, was it? Just give me a moment to find the right book. Red in Red Path. Ah, here it is. Lieutenant Pavel Wreath. Joined the Theramore Guard along with most of the recruits that came across the sea with Lady Proudmore. Enlisted with the Marines of Kul Taras at the age of 16. Distinguished service. Promotions. Hmm. Listed as missing. Missing? Well, that's helpful. And accurate, I suppose, if all that we can find of the man is his badge. With a short smile that doesn't touch his eyes, Tesorin nods at me as I thank him for his help, and then return to Captain Vimes. He said, Missing? That would be Tesorin's kind way of saying traitor. No doubt he's one of those fools so blindly loyal to Admiral Dalen that he's turned traitor. Isn't that a delicious irony? The deserters accuse us of betraying the Alliance. <sighs> it has been a struggle maintaining a presence in the marsh, but through the strength of our resolve, we have been able to maintain several defensive watchtowers throughout the area. The latest information and scout reports I have received indicate that a group of deserters has squatted in our abandoned tower at Lost Point, southeast of the inn. The local lieutenant seems to be Balos Jackin. See if you can get some information out of him. Be warned. He may be a tough nut to crack. I, um, thank the captain for his warning again, but I bet I'll be okay. Lost Point, though, does seem a little on the nose, but then again, names may not have been the strongest point for the old guard who've spent their lives making Warcraft. Before exiting the city, I decide to go to the blacksmith and see what this Kaz Toosprocket can tell me about the shield. The building isn't very hard to find, and walking into the smithy, I don't even need to ask around for whom I seek. In the corner, I find a gnome, hard at work on a project or two. I approach, getting his attention and telling Toosprocket that Captain Vimes sent me to show him something. He said, Something for me to look at? Interesting piece of iron you have here. Definitely not made by any of the blacksmiths I know over on this side of the sea, and it's certainly not my work. Ah, I almost missed this. The leather strap on the back must have been burned off, but it seems it was made to fit a large person. I'd guess a taran, actually. That's about all I can tell you. Tell Captain Vimes I'm sorry I couldn't be of more help. I bid two sprocket a good day and head to the stables to ready my steed again. While the tarn is a good lead, there's no need to bother the captain with it yet. Instead, I ride out again, following the highway and then heading south until I see the ruins of an alliance outpost in the distance. Lost point, I presume. I dismount, 
Noticing several Theramore deserters hacking at the trees or large siege arrows embedded in the landscape around the tower, there must have been one hell of a fight out here. I proudly walk towards the tower, unafraid of what these traitors have to throw at me. In fact, I make quick work of any that even tries to stop me, to threaten me with blades or intimidate me with words. I do have to give this Balos Jack and character some respect. He sees me cut down his men and still pulls a blade on me, attempting to gut me before I easily knock the weapon from his hands. Realizing that he's, frankly, out of his depth, he wisely says, All right, all right, we surrender. Just put your weapons down. I'll cooperate. Did Vime send you? Couldn't do his dirty work himself, could he? <laughs> Reef? That coward? We threw him out of the camp because he insisted on raiding the supplies of the ogres up at Brackenwall Village. We're not so many in number that we could stand up to those mindless brutes. He crossed the line one too many times, so he left him to fend for himself. Now, I helped you out, so why don't you help us out and forget you bumped into us? Jacken isn't worth my further attention, though part of me does want to cut him down for falling so far. From a proud soldier to nothing more than a highwayman, I'm sure Vimes will send someone to take care of him. Without fear, I turn my back on the man, returning to Theramore to speak with the captain again. I first bring up what the gnome said about the shield found in the rubble. That's not much information to work on, but we'll have to keep it in mind. Hopefully some other pieces of this mystery will fall into place and paint a more helpful picture of what happened. I agree, and then tell him of my encounter with Balos Jacken and his band of merry men, and what he told me of Pavel Reith. I'll send Lieutenant Caldwell to deal with the deserters at Lost Point. In addition, I will instruct him to find Reith. The marsh is not so big and trackless that he should be unable to find him. I've spoken with Inspector Tarim regarding the evidence you gathered from the ruins of the Shady Rest Inn. He seems certain that the hoof prints and shield that you found there point to the Grim Totem clan of Tarin. With reports of Grim Totem activity on the rise in the marsh, this has to be more than a mere coincidence. I'm sending you to speak with Captain Daryl, who is something of an expert on the Grim Totems. Follow the road north out of town to North Point Tower. It's the second outpost on the road. I've actually been out that way before, many, many moons ago before the Cataclysm. I head north out of Theramore, along the older path that the Alliance first carved through Dustwallow when they landed here. It's eerie, to say the least. Sunken bridges and trees hanging over the cobblestones. I could swear I could even see a restless spirit or two wandering the marshes just outside of my peripheral vision. Eventually, I find my way to North Point, another humble tower, though this one in remarkably better condition than the Lost Point. I find a high elf man with an air of command about him. This must be Captain Daryl. He says, Captain Vimes thinks the Grim Totems are behind the destruction of the Shady Rest Inn. That wouldn't have been the first on my list of suspects. But if Captain Vimes sent you here to follow up on a lead, he must have his reasons. Regardless, the Grim Totems have been a thorn in our side for some time, and we're always glad for the extra help. The Grim Totems may be the most warlike of all the Tauren clans, but they're by no means unorganized. If they're the ones who put the torch to the Shady Rest Inn, they'll have had orders from one of the clan elders. There's a large Grim Totem settlement called the Black Hoof Village to the northwest. They've been using it as a base to attack the tower, but I'll bet you'll find the orders you're looking for there. Check the village elders for traces of the orders you seek. If the equipment you found at the ruins of the inn belonged to a Grim Totem attack party, there's likely to be more just like it within their camp to the northwest. We haven't been able to gather much information about Black Hoof Village, but judging from the size of their raiding parties, there's a substantial force based there. Do whatever you have to to capture some of their equipment so that we may compare it with your findings from the inn. I nod, heading out of the tower and back onto that well-worn swamp trail. Eventually, I see the tarn structures in the distance, rising above the trees and hanging in the mists. I march through the marsh, and when the tarns spot me, I strike them down. It's hard work, long work, but eventually, I gather the weapons Daryl requested and slay the elders of this camp. They were intelligent, splitting up their plans into pieces so no single tarn could betray them to an outsider. But when put together, the document read, I have sent you a considerable force, Elder, but you must take care in your activities. 
Your first priority will be to halt the advance of the Alliance Curs into our lands. Some of the more adventurous humans have already started the construction of a large building on the border of the Barrens. See to it that they know their kind is not welcome beyond the borders of their wretched Theramore. Lastly, a word of caution to you, Elder. Do not make your plans known to the ogres at Brackenwall. Those brutes are incapable of even the slightest hint of discretion. Agashem. I knew that Lady Jaina Proudmore had a somewhat tentative alliance with Thrall, the Horde's war chief, so it was good to hear at least that this was not his doing. In fact, these Tarn appear to have gone rogue for this atrocity. That's the only good news I can find in all of this. At least a full-scale war won't be started from this. With this intelligence in hand, I head back to North Point and Captain Daryl, first handing the document to him as I slung the weapons collected from my shoulder. He said, Were you able to find any trace of the orders? Captain Daryl glances at the battle plan. I'd say it doesn't get any clearer than this. They've taken it upon themselves to fight back against human settlements in the area, and I have little doubt that Theramore is next on their list. Oh, and did you get the weapons from Black Hoof Village? Captain Daryl inspects the armaments you've brought from Black Hoof Village. Hmm, there's no doubt about it. These match the description exactly, but there's just one problem. These have never been used in battle. Black Hoof Village must not be the only Grim Totem post in the marsh. I can't spare any men to help search for a second Grim Totem outpost, but I think I know of someone who might be able to help you. Deep in the quagmire, to the south, there is a small farmstead owned by Tabitha. She may seem little more than an old hermit, but the truth is that she's a mage, and a scryer of some renown. Follow the road south to her farm and seek her help in finding the culprits responsible for the massacre at the Shady Rest Inn. I'll be honest, hearing about some weirding woman living in a hut in the middle of the swamp, it's an image I kinda dig. I'll be excited to meet this Tabitha. Bidding the captain good luck, I head out, traveling along the road with the directions he gave me. I pass the now deserted Lost Point. Either Vimes' men cleared it out, or Jackin and his ilk knew better than to stick around. Eventually, I come across a path jutting from the main road. This must be what Daryl described. As I travel it, I see a tent off the main path. It's destroyed, clearly left to rot here as nature has started to reclaim it. A foul stench meets my senses, and I force myself not to gag as I dismount to investigate. A skeleton and two skulls lie beside an abandoned campfire, as various other goods and tools are strewn about. But what concerns me is, well, the butchery inside of the tent. Laid out upon a large pallet is the remains of... Something, perhaps many things, with a large axe stuck into one of the pieces of meat. It's disgusting, gut-wrenching. In the distance, through the mists, I see the outline of what must be Tabitha's hut. Concerned with what I found here, fearful that whatever did this might have gotten to her too, I rush ahead. Thankfully, however, she appears to be fine, living here in this hovel with several apprentices and even an SI-7 agent, whom I wisely leave to his business. I approach Tabitha, telling her of our need for her power, and she says, So you want me to scry for grim totems, huh? And what will you say when I tell you there's no need? There's no scrying necessary to see the trouble my new neighbors are creating. And if this is the band that burnt down the Shady Rest Inn, as you claim, there's no reason to tolerate their presence any longer. Take this torch and raise the camp to the ground. You'll find Diahorn just to the north of my farm. You can't miss it, really, as the Grim Totems have done a splendid job of announcing their presence with those totems they favor. Following Tabitha's direction, I follow the path behind her house, and indeed, there's a large torn village just visible through the mists. In fact, it's right off of the highway running through the swamp. Not entirely sure how the Alliance could have possibly missed this. Anyway, I make my way into this village, slaying the Grim Totem without mercy. This is a bloodthirsty cult, unlike any of their honorable kin. And to murder an innocent family, a child. We have to send a message that this cannot ever happen again. Any threat to the people of Theramore is one to the entire Alliance, and I take it personally. By the end of my work here, all of the huts burn. I don't like that we had to resort to this. I wish none of it had ever happened. 
but I can't help but see a bit of poetic irony in it all. I head back to Tabitha to return her torch, and she said, Have you put the torch to good use? I hope the Grim Totems got the message. Any attempt to return will be met with far worse than a mere torch. My apprentices and I will see to that. Although those Grim Totems were simply a nuisance to me, Captain Vimes will want to know of your deeds. Bring him the news that you have tracked down and dealt with those responsible for burning the Shady Rest in. It's too late to save Jim Hyle's family, but perhaps the Grim Totems will think twice before attacking anyone connected to Theramore. Indeed, that is the hope. I want no more pointless bloodshed of innocence. I bid Tabitha a good day and make my way back into the swamp, back to Theramore and into its keep to inform Captain Vimes that the business has been settled. The captain listens to my report intently. We have avenged James and his family, but not even that can restore what was destroyed. I wish we had a way of letting James Hyle's wife and son know that we brought their murderers to justice. Captain Vimes produces a small wreath, decorated with flowers. There are some who say that their spirits will know, even if we can't reach them. It's not much, but I'd like you to lay this wreath at the Hyle family monument. It's one of the stones in the graveyard just north of Theramore's gates. He softly hands me the wreath. It's a beautiful piece, colorful yet tasteful, a tribute to two lives lost far too soon. I take it and head for the graveyard outside. I'd seen it on my trips in and out of the city. This wasn't my first funeral, or rather, my first remembrance. My first mourning. I find the gravestone marked Lynn Heil and Jimmy Heil, with space conspicuously left unmarked. Or James, when he eventually passed, I was sure. With care, I set the wreath down and said a small prayer to the light. A ah, warmth came over me. Something otherworldly, and yet comforting. Two figures shimmered into shape before me, the forms of a woman and a small boy. James? James. 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 No. 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 You are not James. But I know who you are. You're the one who tracked down the brutes who did this to us. I tried so hard to tell Jim, to tell anyone who was behind this, but I couldn't find a way. Thank you for helping us, and for helping Jim. If you see him, tell him little Jimmy and I love him, and that we're waiting for him. Jimmy turns to his mother. Mommy, when will we see Daddy again? Lynn turns and kneels to speak to Jimmy. I don't know when we'll see Daddy again, Jimmy, but I know he loves you and misses you very much. Mother and son then vanish. I whisper another prayer for the two, hoping that they have found some peace in an afterlife that is welcoming to them. Heading back into the city, I briefly stop and consider speaking to James, to smiling Jim, but I decide against it. To him, I'm just a stranger. Captain Vimes will have insight on what to say to him, so I head back into the keep and to the captain. Captain Vimes smiles slightly as I relate the events I witnessed at the Heil family grave. It's good to know they understand. You didn't tell them about James, did you? I'll deliver his wife's message to him, but I doubt he'll understand. I feared as much, but, well, at least he has some hope for some peace now. I give the captain a final nod and make my way out of the keep, hoping to find that comfortable bed in the inn and that ale I was first seeking when I entered the city. The Shady Rest Inn is one of World of Warcraft's most iconic quest chains, a tragic story that I'm happy we finally got to see the conclusion for, even if it was years and years later. Fun fact, there's actually a Horde version of this quest line that, while ending in a similar place, covers slightly different events. Let me know if you want to see me cover that side of the story, too. Another of World of Warcraft's most iconic tragedies is the tale of Morgan Lattimore, a holy paladin driven to insanity and then death after the loss of his family. Now, his corpse wanders the graveyard in Duskwood, searching for some measure of revenge. If you'd like to know more about his story, go check out my video covering the tragedy of Mor Laddam. 
Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and to subscribe for more. You can also ring the bell to make sure you never miss an upload. All of that really helps me out and I appreciate each and every one of you who does it. Also, please remember to go check out my Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram pages for more bite-sized bits of lore and storytelling if that's your thing. As always, thank you so much for watching, and until next time.